Hey guys, welcome to episode two of our new Modern Nexus video series where we uh, pick a deck in Modern, um, either a fun list or, you know, like a tier one deck or a uh, recent event deck that did well, and we run it through a Modern 8-man, um, see how it does. We talk about the deck, some sideboarding, super secret tech, um, matchups, things like that. Today we are playing Blue White Blink, um, which was won by... Uh, some individual, something Silberman, I don't remember his first name, I apologize. Uh, he won a Premier IQ, um, I believe, last weekend. I'm recording this on a Sunday, the 28th, uh, to go up on Monday. Um, and he won uh, last weekend. I forget the city. Um, but anyways, this is the deck that uh, we're playing. It got first in that event. Um, this is the kind of blue-white value, you know, Sun Titan control that, you know, wants to play like early drops like Wall of Omens and Lone Missionary to buy time, Pilgrim's Eye to find extra lands um, to set up this end game where you're casting Sun Titan and recurring these value, you know, little trinkety spells that just, that just get you there. I don't know, like this deck, this deck loves basic planes more than any other deck, I guess. Um, I'm sure Craig Wesco would uh, would tend to disagree with me, but um, yeah, so I guess we'll just jump right in. Uh, really quick before we break down the deck, I want to say thank you to Modern Nexus and Card Hoarder. Um, if you missed episode one, uh, Modern Nexus and Card Hoarder both sponsor this video series. They make it possible for us to do this. Uh, Modern Nexus hosts the videos um, both on their website, modernnexus.com, which, uh, which you should check out and uh, their YouTube page, which is awesome as well. And Card Hoarder uh, loans us all of the cards that we can use to play these decks, um, which is great too. So uh, I will show you at the end of the video, um, Card Hoarder's website, they've got this really cool uh, deck upload tool where you can take a deck list, um, put it into their site, you can uh, get um, basically like a breakdown on what everything costs if you want to buy the deck from Magic Online um, or parts of the deck. And uh, you can do other cool things like share, you know, share the list and optimize the list. We'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, it's really good. So big thanks to them. So with uh, that being said, let's jump into the deck tech. So jumping right in, planes. Everybody loves planes. Um, 24 land. Uh, you really don't need like 26 land for um, a normal control deck um, because we're able to like cheat on it a little bit by... Uh, having Wall of Omens to draw us cards and Pilgrim's Eye and Court Hussar to find us extra lands, things like that. Um, but yeah, mana base is fairly simple. Playing the four, uh, full four Ghost Quarter, uh, which we're playing over Titanic Edge because we can use Ghost Quarter in combination uh, with Sun Titan to like blow up one of our lands to get another land uh, or like blow up our opponent's lands and then bring it back with... Um, uh, with Sun Titan, either like Sun Titan's Enter the Battlefield trigger or his attack trigger. Um, and Ghost Quarter over Titanic Edge is, in my opinion, better against Tron because Tron doesn't need four lands to, uh, you know, they can just like, they only need their three Tron pieces. Um, so Titanic Edge can often be a little slow. Um, but yeah, I really like Ghost Quarter. Um, one of the strengths of this deck, I think, is that it's able to play for Ghost Quarter. Um, so I wouldn't recommend cutting one. Uh, Amiria the Sky Ruin is kind of like the big late game engine. This doesn't come into play that often, um, but it is something that we can build to. Just uh, this slow accumulation of planes uh, lets us build up uh, this resource that threatens this late game that just uh, goes over the top of pretty much uh, anything that our opponent can be doing. Um, I mean, the, the, the thing is, this is technically kind of like a value combo that isn't as good as the other combo um, elements of different decks in the format, which we'll, we'll get a little bit more into this later on. Um, so like, like this deck is not a combo deck, but Amiri the Sky Ruin does give it a sort of combo element against decks looking to interact with us fairly, like uh, Jund or Grixis Control, um, that is able to just set up like recurring Sun Titans or recurring Lone Missionaries or something nonstop, and if that's what we're looking for. Um, so it is a pretty good late game to play, too. Uh, moving on into the core of the deck, and then we'll talk about the uh, um, like the interesting one and two ofs. Uh, four Path to Exile, four Wall of Omens, um, Lone Missionary. Uh, these are just great, cheap, interactive spells in uh, th these colors. 
um, alongside a few counter spells, mana leak, some negate. Um, going up into the three drops, Cortisar is sweet. Um, you know, the one three with vigilance that is, it's basically a divination, but you get a one three on the battlefield and it is a permanent that can be returned with Sun Titan or Mary of the Sky Ruin. Um, Cortisar is pretty cool. Um, it does does good work blocking random elves and stuff, but he's really he's really here like this motley crew of random creatures actually does a good job holding off the uh, the ground long enough to either find a sweeper or land a sun titan. Um, Cortisar is sweet. You get to cast it. Uh, you get a one through vigilance. You, it it replaces itself, and then you get to bring it back with sun titan. You know, because the only thing we need to make sun titan better is add a draw card onto it. Um, but yeah, he's he's great. I think he's better than Augur of Bolas just because we have a lot of permanent cards. Uh, not not so many instants and sorceries as you would think. It would be in like a normal blue white control deck, um, but this is like a very sorcery speed tap out permanent based control deck. Uh, so I like Cortasar over Augur of Bolas. Um, I forget who it was that said it, but Augur of Bolas basically reads: uh, look at the bottom three cards of your library. Um, we've got some removal, Pilgrim's Eye, everybody's favorite random Thopter dude, uh, Supreme Verdict, um, Sun Titans, and uh, that rounds out our top end. Um, as we said before, basically the whole strategy is just building to cast a Sun Titan to get more value and build up a collection of resources and just, you know, have basically get every permanent card out of our deck onto the battlefield slowly. Um, Moving on into uh, the other, the one ofs. I'm not sold on the gifts ungiven. Um, it's been okay, but I would really like access to like a Snapcaster Mage if I want to play a gifts ungiven. Um, just we're not setting up like we're not playing the Unburial Rights package, uh, which you normally see alongside gifts. It's just kind of like an instant speed, you know, kind of like a like a cheaper Jason's ingenuity or something. Um, which I guess is fine. It's it's cool to have alongside the Ojitize command, but um, a lot of times, especially after Cyborg, uh, Snapcaster Mage, is, we're really looking for Snapcaster Mage to get extra value out of our spells. So I'm leaning towards cutting the gifts for a Snapcaster, but uh, for this video, I'm going to play it um, exactly how uh, Mr. Silberman played it. Uh, negates and a Dispel, uh, excellent against Burn, good against Combo. Um, uh, basically, like our matchup against combo really depends on how many uh, slots we want to devote to cheap counter spells. Um, things like Living End, uh, Scape Shift really punish us if we're going to be playing these like do nothing cards in the matchup, like Pilgrim's Eye and Wall of Omens. Uh, so you have to have some number of counter spells. I feel like I would want a Spell Snare. Oops, our round is starting. Let's go back. I feel like I would want like a Spell Snare over. Um, you know, the Dispel, but Dispel is like one of the best cards in the format right now. And I think that's it for the main deck. Let's move on to this. All right, so moving on to the sideboard, um, we have a Celestial Purge. Um, good against Jund, good against... What else is it good against? Splinter Twin in response to a Twin if you need it. Um, it's good against Black and Red Permanents. Great against Burn. Um, I'm trying to think. Celestial Purge is one of those, you know, random catch-alls that actually does some great stuff in a few matchups. Um, this deck doesn't really care about Blood Moon just because we play a super high number of basics. Um, but yeah, Purge is great. Good as a one of. Um, grabs random things, and it does enough that it's worth the slot. Um, normally, cards like these are narrow enough that I could see cutting them if you decide you need something else. But uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, Disenchant, uh, same thing, it's great against Affinity, um, does random good work against Merfolk, uh, hitting Spreading Seas and um, Aether Vial, uh, you get to hit Twin if you want, um, unfortunately it doesn't work against Karano's God of Storms, um, otherwise I think it would be pretty insane, but uh, yeah, like Worm Coil Engines, uh, Tron pieces, or um, Tron, like, you know, Expedition map, things like that. Uh, Relic of Regenitus. Um, Disenchant does some work. Lone Missionary, we want the uh, fourth one against Burn. It's also great against, like, you know, other creature decks, just like a 2 1. Um, it, I mean, it does work. We can beat down with 2 1s. I've won games beating down with 2 1s before. 
Um, four life, I don't know. Like, Lone Missionary is nothing to laugh at. Two mana for a 2-1, you gain four life. It's okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I like it a lot. I think it's slightly better than a Dispel against Burn, but Dispel was probably better in other matchups. Um, I think the Burn matchup might be fine, that we could get by with not playing four Lone Missionary. Um, but, again, like, I like the burn matchup to be pretty solid especially online just because you you run you tend to run into burn pretty often um so yeah if you're expecting a lot of burn in your local metagame um play the lone missionary if not you could probably cut it for a dispel and you wouldn't lose too many points against burn because the spell is great against burn as well um and the spell will give you uh better you know like a little bit of an edge in like the combo matchups like living ends cape shift things like that uh, Stony Silence for Affinity, um, another random dex to play artifacts. Um, this guy we'll get back to in a minute. Uh, an extra sweeper in the form of Wrath of God and Supreme Verdict for like these Abzian Company decks, uh, Elves, um, Jund. Sweepers against Jund are great. Uh, they're just trying to run us out of cards and then top deck better than we that better than we do and a supreme verdict when we're both top decking is great for pulling back from them you know being able to go like you know scavenging ooze plus tarmogoyf um just having uh, a built-in two for one is great for uh the matchups where they're trying to run us out of resources meddling mage is sweet i love meddling mage um this card's great it's uh has uses in a whole bunch of matchups um lights out against a lot of combo decks like living end um, it's great. Uh, even against burn, you can just like, um, you know, name a lightning bolt, and then they uh, have to like, you know, if they have a lightning bolt in hand, or um, you know, like they're tapped out, you play a meddling mage. You know, name a spell that they have in hand. They have to then kill the meddling mage to cast that spell. Um, so you're still, you know, it's like a, it's like a mana leak that sits on the board that you actually get to use instead of them being able to pay for it. And it can either trade with an Eidolon of the Great Rebel or, you know, just like hit our opponent um, and start the race. Meddling Mage is sweet. Uh, Surgical Extraction, I've never really been a fan of these types of cards, um, but it's pretty sweet with our Ghost Quarter. We could just like, you know, blow up an Ursus Tower and just go get the rest of the towers, you know, turn one and just like be done with it. Just like I'm done. I'm done with Tron. Um, so that's, you know, pretty good. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other uses also. Um, grabbing scape shift, grabbing living end. Um, I'm sure it does. Yeah, I'm sure it grabs a uh, the ad nauseum deck. Though that deck's never really that big, but we always seem to run into it when I play online, um, either while streaming or recording videos. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really like surgical extraction that much, but um, you can't deny that the card has its uses and the art is sick. So there is that. Um, another Dispel. Dispel is the best, in my opinion, best uh, um, blue card in Modern right now, except for maybe Snapcaster Mage. Uh, definitely the best blue sideboard card. Um, Dispel is awesome. It's great against all of these uh, control decks that are running around. It's great against the combo decks. It's great against Burn. Um, it's even like the 26 creature decks are playing for Collective Company. Um, Dispel is awesome. Um, another negate, just uh, more help against combo that is not mana leak. Um, you really don't want mana leaks in your board, um, just because like as you're the control deck, people will you know uh, naturally board to like play against mana leaks, so your mana leak becomes worse. You know in game two and three, as games become a little bit more reactive and people aren't so focused on like executing their primary game plan and you know casting their spells and uh, prioritizing mana efficiency. Um, games tend to slow down um, as like you know our opponents uh, try and bring in you know interactive things and trumps and they're trying to play around counter spells and sequence their plays in such a way that they can like you know drop a bomb that's good against us under counter magic. Um, so I like sideboarding a negate over a mana leak just because negates are normally poor once you're getting access to your sideboard spells because you're you know moving into game two and three. Um, I don't know if you could if you could find your sideboard spells in game one maybe mana leak would be fine in the sideboard but we're not playing any wishes so and then uh, spreading seas is sweet both for fixing our mana which happens often um, just because we are playing for ghost quarter um, and then like Amiri of the sky ruin like we can get awkward hands that are like 
uh, two planes, Ghost Quarter, Amiria, and like we have a mana leak that we need to cast, or um, we want to be able to like uh, mana leak and hold up to spell. Um, Spreading Seas can help us fix our mana as long as we can find one island. Um, it also is pretty good against uh, um, other decks like, uh, let's see who have Spreading Seas. I have Spreading Seas Burn, um, bring it in against Living End, I think. Feel a sneeze coming on. <sighs> Alright, I'm good. Um, I don't know. You don't really want it against Jund. Um, I think the Spreading Seas could get cut. I guess it's fine against Affinity, and it's fine against Infect, uh, just because we are pretty uh, instant speed removal light against Affinity and Infect, but Mortar Pod is supposed to help us there. I don't know. Spreading Seas see seems like um, we could find a better use for those two sideboard slots. But uh, yeah, for now, uh, for now, I guess we'll play him. And then the Stone Cloaker. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know what this card's for. It's three mana for a three-two flash flyer. When he enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. When he enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. I would assume he's like some small graveyard hate against Grixis control, but it doesn't seem to matter. Um, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. I feel like I would just rather have like a Flicker Wisp maybe. Um, I guess the Flash is good. I don't know. It just seems like uh, the three abilities that it provides, you could all, like if you're interested in those abilities, you could all find something that does something better. Um, like if you really want the Flash, you know, maybe you could uh, get the, um, I'm blanking on it, but, uh, uh, oh, the Avon Mind Sensor. Um, I don't know. If you really want the Bounce, I don't know. It just it just seems like such a weird card. Maybe maybe I'm missing some awesome uh, synergy with Stone Cloaker. If I am, let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've yet to board this card in. I've yet to be even remotely interested in casting it. But I don't know. We'll see. So that's it. Let's get through the games.